I don't want to sell my silver back for dollars when the financial meltdown kicks into full gear. Exactly. If we, that happens. Does the guy that maybe walks by your shop trust this? And I don't know if YouTube is going to even let us talk about this. And I, I don't want to get us in trouble. But go for it. <laughs> The worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. We're now down 43%. This could be the most serious recession in decades. Protect your retirement with a gold and silver IRA. Learn more at sdbullion.com slash IRA. Yankee, welcome back. It's great to see you. Oh, it's great to see you too, Silver Dave. Great to be back here at Local Silver Mint in Ware, New Hampshire. What do you got for us today? I was thinking that we'd walk around the room and just go over some of the differences Ooh. between the different products, giving some really useful information for silver stockers that are just beginning. But also, I think that even the uh, more experienced silver stockers would get some useful information out of this video. And also, I do want to cover a few subjects that might be controversial wow new stackers so this is really going to be helpful to them and to others let's let's do it where do we start okay why don't we start here with bullion coins so okay bullion coins are different from rounds because they are made by a government mint mm -hmm. and they have a face value such as dollars euros rand uh, or other and so that uh, typically when you buy a bullion coin, you are paying a higher premium than when you buy bullion rounds and bars. So they're more expensive. It's more expensive. Yeah. And part of that is because uh, some might say that the bullion coins are more recognizable all around the world or more trusted. Uh-huh. Oh, I've heard that argument. I've made that argument, Silver Dave. <laughs> yeah. Is, would you agree with that? Well, you know, it's an interesting statement because depending on who you ask, there are some people who will say, you know, Dave, I never buy uh, uh, anything but American Silver Eagles because that's what I trust and that's all that I buy. And there's other guys that'll say, Dave, I only buy bullion rounds. I never buy coins because I don't want to pay more per ounce. So there's different schools of thought on this. And who is right? Well, depends on who you ask. Uh, but, um, you know, the American Silver Eagle is considered the uh, world's most recognizable and trusted mm -hmm. bullion coin uh, because it's made by the United States Mint. And because the U.S. government is seen around the world as a beacon of financial responsibility. <laughs> you can't say that. I'm without, trying not to you, laugh when you I say it. You can't say that without laughing. Oh. But does the, does the guy that maybe walks by your shop trust this anymore or recognize it anymore? Well, once again, I think depending on who you ask, but most dealers are going to look at the item and they're gonna know what it is. If it's a silver eagle, mm -hmm. if it's a buffalo round, and they're gonna, they're gonna buy it accordingly, they're gonna pay accordingly. Right. I don't think that any dealer is gonna not buy a buffalo ounce because he doesn't trust that it's silver because it's not an American silver eagle. Yeah. But they may pay slightly more if you're selling it to them if it's a silver eagle. It really does boil down to whether or not you uh, value the potential trust and recognizability of these coins enough to pay the extra premium. Yes. And when you sell it back, you tend to get that premium back, correct? Well, it depends. In some okay. cases, some people will buy your silver and they will only look at it in terms of ounces. Mm. And they'll say, oh, what's the spot price? What's the ounces? Wow. In which case, then you lose out with the eagles and that you do better with the uh, bullion bars and rounds. Some people, on the other hand, will pay more of a premium for eagles or coins, okay. uh, fractional or other types of uh, silver. If so it depends it on okay. the trade okay. that you're doing. Uh, but I stack some of all the things. And when I want to give a silver 
uh, item to either the postman or the, sh the UPS guy. I give him an American Silver Eagle because he's an American and he really appreciates that a lot more than just giving him a silver round. You know what coin we've seen more fakes of than any other coin? The Eagle? Yes. I've had more guys come into the store with fake silver eagles than any other coin. Okay. And a lot of times a guy will come in here and he'll say, oh, I got a great deal. I bought 50 American silver eagles on eBay for $10 oh, each. And I say, oh boy. <laughs> and so then we go through and we test them and that they're not silver, mm -hmm. nor are they American silver eagles. Wow. So, yeah. uh, you know, does buying American silver eagle guarantee what you're getting is legit? Not necessarily. Okay. That's why it's good to have some ways to test and identify your silver. You can use the pocket pinger, very, very affordable, highly reliable way to test the silver. And then there's also a scale. Put it on a scale, weigh it. Put it next to a known silver eagle. Is it twice as thick? Hmm. The same weight? Is the weight wrong? Those are things that people should look for. Okay. And so with that, why don't we take a look <laughs> over here at Ooh. silver bullion bars and rounds. Where do you want to start with so, the bars? Well, let me just give a little overview that you would typically pay less for bullion bars and rounds. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there are some on the surface differences like the one ounce, the rounds are typically one ounce versus bars can be one ounce, but typically the bars are bigger like five ounce, 10 ounce or a kilo or even hundred ounce. Now the advantages to these bigger bars is that you'll typically pay less per ounce to get them and they will take less space in your vault so that you can fit more ounces. They're easier to count, easier to stack. Rounds yeah. and bars are pretty much though the same thing. They're made from private mints usually and rounds and bars, rounds are just round bars. Bars are just square rectangular rounds, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. You did really good at geometry, I can tell. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> they don't have a uh, denomination on them. Yes, that is an important distinction. That is, does not have a dollar face value on okay. it or euros, uh, but it's the point of it is the silver as opposed mm. to the numismatic or as opposed to the face value of it. Okay. And that you can still test your bars and rounds yes. just like you should, <laughs> just like you should with your eagles or your other items. So. What should a new stacker or even a seasoned stacker focus on? Well, I don't want to say what a person should do, but I would just say what I like. Mm -hmm. And I typically stack heavier in uh, bullion bars and rounds than I do in terms of coins. And that's because of the cost of it and also because I don't necessarily see uh, that uh, paying that extra four coins is going to always get me that okay. uh, higher trade value later. Now, I'm actually on the opposite end. I tend to stack more of the government minted sovereign silver than I do the bars and rounds, although I have been focusing on rounds recently. Mm. Uh, my latest full stack silver video actually showed that breakdown and it is more, more sovereign silver. Yeah, so depending on what your stacking style is, and it's, you know, depending on how you use it on the other end is going to impact how well it serves you. And I think that's a really important thing to think about mm. is what are you going to do with your silver later? Are you going to trade it for goods and services? Are you going to sell it to a dealer for dollars? What are you going to do with it? I tend to like the idea of getting silver that you can trade because I don't want to sell my silver back for dollars when the financial meltdown kicks into full gear. Exactly. If we, that happens. I know, right? We, we got out of the declining dollar for a reason and got into precious metals. That reason will only be worse. Why would we want to go back to fiat currency? Yeah, I agree. Why don't we come over here? Well, first, just take a moment to look at Morgan silver dollars. Oh, I love Morgans. Which a really oh. neat coin. But the thing about the Morgans is that a lot of what you're paying for is the numismatic value. And so when you're buying a Morgan has about $16 worth of silver in it at the current market, but you'll pay about 30 plus or minus dollars for them. But people like them, they're fun uh, because they're old. So I think the Morgan could be a really good gift for somebody uh, who's um, 
you know, new or not into silver yet. They're good as a collectible, but they're not as good for a silver stocking because of the high premium mm -hmm. that you're paying over the silver content. Gotcha. So yeah. if I could alert our attention to this 90% silver coinage, this is great stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say it's really good for barters and trades, the divisibility. And mm -hmm. I agree with that. But there's a problem, and here's my concern. My concern is that coins that say the language, the United States of America, right on the coin, my concern is that if there was going to be a confiscation, it's possible that having those words, the United States of America, written on the coin, could be used as a claim of ownership. And so that the government or whoever takes over the government could say that that is their property, it has their name on it, and you have to turn it in. So that's wow. my concern, and that's why I don't stack 100% coins that say that language on them. Well, that is really an interesting take. Um, our government would never do that, though. No, no, of course not. No, I mean, no. they obviously, they follow the, the Constitution. Constitution. Yeah, right. I know. Yes. I know people are like, oh, but the Constitution protects the coinage. Yes. But hello, McFly, have you not seen how much they're following the Constitution now? They have already violated almost every single amendment in the Constitution. Why do we think that they're going to abide by it? And also, if I could add, at some point, it's possible that the World Health Organization, oh who's already signed a contract with almost every country, that in the event of a health emergency, they would have jurisdiction and power over the rules of said country. And so they could suspend the Constitution and the Coinage Act just as much. Wow. And I'll even add one more piece. I'm going to take this, and I don't know if YouTube is going to even let us talk about this, and I, I don't want to get us in trouble. But go for it. <laughs> here we go. The other concern I have, especially with circulating U.S. currency, including paper money and even the silver coinage, is that in the event that there was another health emergency, because <laughs> I can only say those yeah, words, thank you. Yep. then it's possible that they may say that all of the exchanging currency is infected and then you have to turn it in and oh. people would be scared of it. They'd be scared of trading the money and it's possible that these coins may still be considered in that category and so that in turn, you've got to turn it in and no one would want to take it. So that would be a huge problem. And where would you be if you had a whole bunch of 90% silver coinage and suddenly you had to turn it in? What would you do? Would you turn it in or would you melt it all and then refine it all and then manufacture a product no, out no, of it? No, 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 I can't. You... <laughs> Actually, you do that. You have a well, mint. And that's, you understand why, what that's that why we make one-tenth ounce silver yeah, yeah. that doesn't have any government slogans on it, doesn't have anything written like the United States of America or any, anything that could be used as a claim of ownership, mm -hmm. and it's little so that you can do barters and trades with it. That's why we make this, and it would be really a bummer if you had to melt all your 90% down, refine it, and then make all this out of it. And then what would that cost? Okay, so this is a really interesting thought. Um, I'm curious to know what people think about this potential. Um, yeah. Please comment below if you agree yeah, that if, this is a if possibility. You think, and if you think that I'm totally wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, and yeah. you know what? I'm willing to be wrong because when I'm wrong, I mm. learn something new. Okay. This is 35% silver and 40% silver. These are war nickels. And then you have Kennedy 40 percenters. And so I'm curious. I'm curious what the audience is going to say about this. Uh, because on one hand, the price that you're paying for the silver content is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, people don't seem to like these very much. And it's kind of funny because the 90% silver, they call that junk silver. What do you call this? So you don't get much demand for them. Not a lot. But I happen to have some because we had some guys come and sell it to us and we bought it based on the metal content. They are available. We're happy to sell them for a very fair price.
Awesome. Actually, if you're interested in those or anything else at Local Silverman, come on over and see Dave up here in Ware, New Hampshire. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Silver Dave, and this is Yankee Stacking Channel. <laughs> Stack it up!